I think learning analytics is really the silent storm that's going to make a bigger difference in our educational system and experience in the long run. I'm Alyssa Wise. I'm an associate professor at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, Canada with the Educational Technology and Learning Design Group. My research group focuses on looking how students interact in online discussions and recently we've moved towards calculating and providing learning analytics of these processes to students to help them being more intentional and reflective in how they participate in discussion forums. So what barriers did learning analytics overcome in the last three to five years? I think in the last five years learning analytics the field has made big progress in how we work with data. I think the sophistication of our analytic methods and the kinds of metrics and visualizations that we're able to produce as a result have improved greatly and not only are more sophisticated technically but are also more meaningful for learning and have the better possibility to be useful and informative to teachers, students and administrators in reflecting on and taking action on their learning processes. I think in addition to the areas in which we've made big improvements, there's some areas in which we're improving but we're still working on. Uh, some of those are the systemic challenges of getting access to data. Uh, it, it's a whole new data landscape out there and so in some ways a lot of institutions are not yet sure what rights and responsibilities they have with respect to student data. In addition, an area in which I think a lot of our progress has come but still more work is needed is collaborations between researchers on the technical side and those on the, the more pedagogical side. So looking forward to the big barriers I think that are upcoming in the next three to five years that we're going to need to tackle, I think one of the big issues, perhaps the most important one, is not a technical one but a social one. We've gotten to the point where we have quite a few sophisticated tools and data representations available. One big challenge moving from working with big data to actually having big impact is thinking about how people are going to interact with that information as part of their learning and teaching processes. So I think all the great analytics and visualizations in the world aren't going to make a difference if we can't find ways for them to be meaningfully incorporated into teachers and learners daily practices. So there's quite a few pieces involved in that. Some of them relate to data literacy and helping teachers and students and administrators become more familiar with the kinds of data representations that are going to become available and how to make meaning of them. But meaning goes beyond just understanding the data to be thinking about what it means with respect to a particular educational situation and the kinds of questions we're asking there. So the situation and contextualization of what does this data mean to me here in this situation given my role and goals is becoming, I think, a more pressing question for the field. Finally, there's the transparency piece. As these representations get rolled out into the world, there's going to be more concerns with what data is being collected for what purposes and being shown to whom. And so I think greater transparency about that is going to allow learning analytics to be a tool for learner and teacher empowerment and opportunities to do more as rather a situation where people feel like they're being surveilled. What will the world of analytics look like in the next three to five years? Well, some of my vision is premised on the notion that we're going to do some of these things well. And I think if we do, in the next three to five years, we're going to start to see learning analytics as something that's happening out in the world. We're going to see more implementations in school settings, more uses of analytics as a form of data-based reflection, which allows teachers and students to more usefully monitor what's happening and make adjustments in real time. You can think of kind of this ongoing formative feedback about how the learning processes are going that we can use to adjust. So we're going to see greater rollout in schools, and I think we're going to also see an expansion from just higher education, which is where a lot of the focus is now, to other areas of, of learning, perhaps in the corporate sector, but also in K-12. And I think some of that's going to come with the push that publishers have to move into electronic formats. It's going to be starting to generate data even when we're in face-to-face -face environments.